So welcome to anyone who is joining us. Today we're going to be talking about advanced skills and tricks in Zotero. And I've already talked to some of the folks who have joined us on this call today about what they're interested in learning. And so one of the things that we're going to focus in on is how do you add an attachment to your Zotero library to an individual citation? So that could be a PDF of the article that didn't come down with the article when um, it was originally downloaded, or maybe it's a Word document that you want to upload. So we'll talk about that. Uh, I wanted to talk about group libraries today. So teaching you what you can do with group libraries. What does it mean when it's a private library versus a public library? Uh, what do are people able to see with that? And for students, that's going to be helpful if you want to share your bibliography with your professor. Um, you can actually create a, a list of articles in your Zotero library, create it as a public library and then um, public slash private. And that will enable people to see what you have on your Zotero list um, and give you some feedback on what, um, what they think about those articles. So that's one of the things you can do with it. If you're a professor, it's something that you can do where you can have students join a group bibliography and then add sources that they think would be great for a reading list um, and do edits and annotations for that and even comment and discuss them. So that's an activity that somebody could do with a group library. And then of course, if you're a researcher, um, if you use a private library or um, then you can collaborate with a teammate at another institution and um, you can share resources. So when I upload my files here, um, if I'm the owner of the group library, then uh, all the, and I enable file storage, then it's gonna let others see the documents that I have saved into the group library and I can see theirs. Uh, it will count against my own storage, but um, that's an option that you can do as well. So that's the other thing that I wanted to talk about. And if we have time, um, uh, the final thing that I thought would be interesting is just looking at how you can add additional styles. So you may be trying to publish in a journal and you can't find the style that you want in the list of styles um, on your default list. How do you add in a style? So those are the things I was going to cover. So to get started, let's go to um, let's go to my Zotero library. I'm going to go ahead and open my Zotero library. And we're going to start with trying to add, up, add a, a PDF to an existing entry in our Zotero library. So I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to share my desktop here so you can see me toggling back and forth between a couple of different tools. Uh, as we know, on Zotero, you have your Zotero tool. This is my library with all my great, fun, exciting sub collections and all my interesting uh, articles and um, I you can see in the background that you can see the online version of Zotero. So I'm just going to close those really quickly. Let's delete that. And so to begin, let's just choose one of the articles that are here in my existing library. I have why Instagram is the worst um, social media for mental health. It looks like that's more of a Time Magazine article. So I'm gonna to try to see if I can locate a journal article. The little icons here that are blue indicate that these are websites that I pulled down. And then this would indicate that it's more of a journal article. So that's how I can easily tell by looking at my library, which ones are journal articles. And as you know, um, if you uh, click on this little triangle here, you can see what kind of items are attached to it. So this one already has a PDF, so I don't need to find that one. Let's check a few more um, and see, it looks like several of mine came with a PDF. So here I'm gonna to go to using curriculum mapping to scaffold and equitably uh, distributed information literacy for graduate programs. So let me set up my system here. It looks like I, um, Looks like I hid my notes area, which I've never done before. And now, of course, there we go. <laughs> now, of course, I would be struggling with it. OK, so um, this is the title of the article. Um, first thing I need to do is I got to figure out where this is located. I'm going to take the name of the journal. I'm going to go back to the library homepage so that we can find the full text of it. 
So let's go to agnescott.edu forward slash library. And maybe Zotero, who knows why it didn't pull it down from um, the citation that you got it from. It might have just been that you were in this discover tool and it had a full text finder button, but you needed to move on and locate the full text on another page. So it's possible that it just downloaded the page that didn't have the full text and we do have access to it. The easiest way for you to figure out if we have access to that publication is to go to find journals and then type in the name of the publication that it's in. So this would be Wall Street Journal, New York Times, the name of the journal itself, not the title of the article, so that it can assess whether we have access to that publication at all inside of our library databases. And then um, once you identify it in the list that appears, you just identify which database has the full text of the version that you want. So these are all databases with different date ranges for that publication. As you can see, Science Direct has a lot longer uh, date range. So if I go back now to my Zotero library and look at the citation information, I can see that I need um, something from 2021. So this is a very recent one. So I need the most recent um, one of the, the January issue. So going back here, um, I can see that most of these are not going to work for me and only Science Direct will work for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that one. It's going to open up the database in the full in uh, a new page. And with different databases, it'll have different interfaces. Right now, what it's asking me to do is to register um, so that it'll save all my information in the account that they create for me. But I don't wanna do that. I don't need that. So I'm gonna just X out of this and um, go to the journal. And from here, I'm just locating the full text. So I, this is not something I was really planning on doing, but it's useful to know um, for finding where are gonna be your best uh, first stop shop for getting access to your full text. So you might as well um, know how to do this in order to know how to upload it. Um, so let me go ahead and see if I can paste in the name of that article. Um, I can either do that or I can look at the uh, browse through the issues. And I said that I was looking for January. So here's the January issue. And if I scroll through, um, you can see that this is the article that I wanted. So I'm gonna just go ahead and normally, obviously I could just go ahead and I'm gonna do this anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and add this one to my Zotero library because I can show you how to remove duplicates. And, for, and you can see here, it is technically downloading the PDF. Um, so that should be going into a new citation, but for some reason it doesn't wanna do that. So it's exited out. Okay, cool they have some sort of firewall up that's preventing me from it. What I can do now is I can go ahead and download the PDF. And I have um, the option to click here to download it and save it to my desktop. You can see that it's down here. And when I go back to my Zotero library, now I just locate the citation. So you can see I have two citations here. Um, I'm going to add it to this top one. So you just click on the title that you want to add the item to. And at the top up here is where they have attaching a, a link, a stored copy of a file. So if I had done some notes on this and I wanted to upload the notes um, of a PDF, or maybe I used another tool to mark up my PDF, um, and I want to attach it to the citation, or if we did the process that we just did right now, I can attach the stored copy of this file um, by clicking on that little paper clip and then locating that in my list of uh, publications, so uh, of downloads. So here's the article and now I'm opening it and now it's attached. Um, and so since I did create a uh, um, so that's the way that you can do that. And now we'll have access to this PDF. When we click on it, it should open up into a PDF tool um, on my desktop. So any questions about that process? Yeah, um, did, uh, I didn't notice, but of course at the beginning you didn't have the PDF attached to the file and you just showed us how to attach it, but did it have the abstract? Oh, um, let me take a look. Uh, so good thing that I um, already downloaded. So um, 
So this is the article that we just worked with. This is the one that I just downloaded. And um, you can see over here that it does. It's just they've collapsed it. I think this is a recent thing that they did. I really feel like I used to be able to see the abstract um, more easily, but they did have the abstract over here. It's just that it was collapsed. Um, and so I had to look for it in the field. Is it, is it possible that they might uh download the abstract but not the pdf uh, because of the different kind of access that we might have for certain journals yes definitely so that's i mean we clearly do have access to this publication um but they this site is blocking it from being added so if, if it's possible that there is a workaround to that that i can go to the zotero documentation so anytime you have a question like this, you can go to zotero.org and they have a pretty robust uh, forum and documentation. So the documentation, we could look through there to see if there was something um, within the section about saving and sharing, saving items. Um, so getting stuff into your Zotero library, they have a whole section here about adding files. Um, but they might have something in here that talks about why some items won't download um, and what the workaround is, or you can go to the forums and they have lots of issues that people are answering here. And so you could search here to see if they know why Science Direct um, is not loading the PDF. So Science Direct, um, uh, that might be how I start. And then I'd have to look through and see if they're talking about PDF in this search. So it looks like there might be something uh, with their metadata that is problematic and they might give me a solution. All right, any other questions with that? All right, so another cool thing that you can do in Zotero that you might not have realized, and I don't know if you guys are having libraries that look like mine. I have way too much stuff in mine, but um, let's go, uh, remember I downloaded two of the same article if on the left hand side you scroll down to um, just before your group libraries, I believe it is, uh, right underneath your main library. So you have group libraries down here and then you have my library up here. These are all my subfolders that are from my library. And these are the group libraries that I share with others that we'll talk about in just a moment. Um, if I go to duplicate items, it's gonna identify all the things that are duplicates in my collection so far and I can uh, collapse them. So let's look for the one that we just were playing with um, using curriculum mapping. So notice when I click on one of them, it clicks on both of the articles and it's showing me that there are two different versions and it wants me to choose which version I want to use as the master item. So I need to determine which one was it that had the PDF. I wanna use the top one as the master item. So I'm gonna click on that. If I, the bottom one had, the PDF, I'd probably keep that one as the master item. And now I can merge the two. And when we go back to that, the library, I'm gonna go ahead and search for it here. So I don't know if you know that you can search through your library. Right now it's only searching fields and tags, but I can search everything. So that should include my notes. Um, now you see that there's only um, one entry and it has two of the same snapshots because it just merged the two. So these snapshots are pictures of what it um, looked like at the time that I downloaded it. And uh, it gives me a link to take back to the original site. So, so that's how um, removing duplicates can work. And that's very helpful for cleaning up your library. So we've just done three different things. We've added things to individual citations by um, adding a link to a stored copy of file. You can also add a link to a file if you want. Um, so that's another option as well. I'm not sure what a URI is. Um, so you have ways that you can attach things and those can be anything as long as it can even be an image that you want to include. And then um, you have the option to search within your library for specific things. And then finally, removing duplicates. So any questions about those before we move on to creating a group library? All right. Yeah. Oh, I did have one. Um, sure. 
<laughs> I think I just lost it though. I, I can't. Okay, That's all so right. it'll come back to you. Okay, so we're gonna move on to group libraries. So um, first thing, making sure that everybody has their library already synced to the web. So sometimes people create libraries and they don't end up creating a username and password. And because they never go to any other computer, um, they don't really notice that they haven't ever synced their library to the cloud. Um, but clouds, uh, syncing to the cloud is gonna be important for doing group libraries. So the first thing I wanna do is if you are on a Mac, you can follow me and go to Zotero and to preferences. If you are in, on a PC, you'll go to edit and in the edit menu, there'll be preferences. So I'm gonna click on Zotero and go to preferences because that's where my preference menu is. Let's uh, minimize this just a little bit so you can see this standing out. So now you can see that there is a box that has general sync, search, export, site, and advanced. Um, I'm gonna go to sync and my username and password is already in here. If you have a box that says username and password, you probably need to fill that out. If you don't know what your username and password is, um, you don't recall creating one, then you're gonna to wanna to go to zotero.org um, to do that. So let me go over to zotero.org and you can see that um, I'm gonna sign out. So up here, um, it has log in. And if you don't have an account, then you will register for a free account. Um, so that's gonna be important for you to use group libraries because the groups are created using the online version here. And so uh, before I move on to that, uh, any questions about your username and password and establishing that and syncing those two. You should be able to download this tool to any computer. And as long as you um, in, add that username and password, it'll sync up to the cloud. And you'll also be able to access your um, citations from the cloud. You have less uh, flexibility of what you can do in the cloud, um, but you can still access your citations, create very rudimentary citations, uh, but you can move things around and organize things. So it's very nice. Um, yes. Okay, so up here, um, in my Zotero library, you can see that it has new collections, but it also has new library. And new library is a new group. Um, so if you were to click on here and do new group, it actually takes you to Zotero um, because it wants you to log into those, the groups. So no matter what, um, you can't create a new library down here um, or in your tool, but it does give you a link um, by clicking on new group to this Zotero page where I can log in. And now I'm uh, able to create a group. So this is where you would create a new group. And remember what you might create a group for is that you might be wanting to display your research. So maybe you wanna create your own page with all your own citations of works that you've done. You've created a Zotero library of or a Zotero collection of the things that you created. Maybe this is for your department. Maybe you wanna highlight all the things that people in your department have published. Um, in that case, you might want to do a public um, uh, group so that people can see things. And then you have to decide, do you want that group to be able to join instantly? And we'll talk more about what they're able to do once they join in just a minute. Um, so, or do you want to approve their membership? So people can apply or you can invite them, but nobody can just join without you approving it. So decide which one you want first, or if you don't want anybody to see your work at all, except for the people that you invite, that's going to be your private membership. So you have to start by creating a name. Um, and I believe I'm just going to try this, um, this, uh, There are things that it doesn't like. Um, it will create any uh, library that you want as long as the name doesn't already exist. So you might end up having to make things unique or 
Yeah, I don't know, actually, to be honest, I don't know what the qualifications are because earlier I was trying to do advanced uh, Zotero skills and it was not letting me create this library. Um, it did not like that name. So honestly, I don't really know because I didn't expect the last one to work. Um, but I created a new library for us uh, that I'll come to in a minute that, I'll, that was uh, on Black History Month. Um, but first let's try this one, Casey Long. I'm gonna create, create it as um, a private membership. So I'm gonna be as restricted as I can. And now the next thing that it asks us to do is to decide what people can do. Okay, so um, I see a hand is raised. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. So is it possible to have more than one projects running on Zotero? So you would have in your library created your folders. What if one of the project is for your uh, directing reading class and you want your student to you want to share what's in that folder with your student and vice versa, but it's not that you want your student to have access to your other folders. Is there a way to do that? Okay. Yes, this is exactly it. Um, you can create as many groups as you have storage for. I can't tell you off the top of my head how much um, the free storage is. I can tell you that I hit my max, um, probably because I've been creating all these group libraries um, and it cost me $8 a year to pay for Zotero. So I love this tool. I think that's worth it. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Um, but yes, that would be, you would do that for every single um, group that you want to create in the different parameters that you want to share. And so what people can do once they're in it um, is that you can decide who can read. So this is a private group, but if you sent the link to somebody, um, Oh, it's, you can see that it's not even letting me um, click on it. So it's restricting things because it's private. But if I wanted to do public closed, anybody on the internet would be able to see it. Um, but you could also decide that you still just want only um, the group members to see it. So they might know that the group exists, but they don't know if it's a public closed library. They know the group exists, but they don't know what's in it and they have to ask to become a member. So you could just set this up at the beginning of your classes where you have this group and then you ask people to set up their Zotero account and ask to join, invite them to join your, um, your library um, and only they would be able to see the content inside. Um, so it sounds like I would need to have more than one Zotero account so if I don't want my students to have access to like my research work. No, um, let me go back over here. So you'll see that there's my library. This is where all your work is. I, you guys cannot see anything that's in here when I share. It's only these individual group libraries that I create. Um, so these are all my group libraries and the one that I, let me refresh because we're just now creating a library and I, the one that I just created should be listed there. Um, see how it says Casey Long? We just created these two. These are ones that have nothing in it right now and only the things that I put in here are the things that people will be able to see. So if I want to go up here and I want to, um, add in something from this biology uh, 110. And I want to put that into my Casey Long library here. I can move that over. And now people can see that, but they can't see the rest of the items in that folder. So um, when I go down to my Casey Long one, that's all they can see. So you're setting up the permissions for what they can do in this small space, but no, they can't get into the rest of your library until it's, you do it's that. Kind of like sharing a Google folder or file within a folder, that's all they can see, right? Yes, okay. yeah, but it's even better than that because um, I didn't move this item from here. This still exists here in my private space. Um, so I can use it in multiple places. So if you have multiple classes where you're using the same reading, um, then you can put that same reading into those places. It'll look unique to each student um, in terms of, uh, the only thing that might be different is that it's not gonna strip out if I had done any um, notes, it would have brought those notes with it. But in the, so let's do this as um, 
I'm going to add a note here, testing. Um, so that adds a note to the individual item. That's where you could have students provide an analysis for you. Um, so this was currently living in my personal library, but if I send it down to the Casey Long Library, um, I think that it's going to take that note with it. And so now when we look at that, there you go. I don't think I actually pulled it. So let me go back up here. Um, let me go back down to my Casey Long library. This is the problem of having so many. Um, so Casey Long, I'm adding that in there. And now, no idea why that one's... Oh, I guess I did already do it. Sorry, I'm work since I've created two accidentally, <laughs> I'm getting myself confused. But here you can see that the note's there. But in this one, I'm going to just go ahead and um, say I want to move that to trash. So I'm taking away that text. And when I go back up here, feeling strained, it's still there. So you can have different types of documents attached to things that are in your personal library versus the ones that are in your group library. Does that make sense? All right. Um, so that's what you choose here is how, what people are going to be able to see. Um, you can do public open, but that takes away a lot of your abilities to share notes and PDFs. So anything that you have attached to the citation, they won't be able to see, even if it's people that you wanted to be able to um, edit things. So if you're working with somebody from a different institution, you never want to have it be a public open account um, because then you won't be able to share PDFs and documents like that, which is really important for um, being able to communicate thoughts about a particular work. So public closed is good if you want people to be able to see the list of items. And then within that public list, um, you can decide who can do editing. Um, so people could be able to see the items um, but they might not be able to edit it. So uh, people, the public can see the items. Um, the public cannot edit any items, only group members can. Or if you don't want your students to be able to edit the items, then you just go ahead and do group admins and you be the admin. Um, so you have these levels of control in that individual space. And um, so that's library editing and then file editing. That is the attachments. So um, if you don't want anybody to, if you don't want to be using up your storage, you might do no group storage. And you can see here it's saying, okay, well, we're going to delete that attachment. Um, or you can decide that only the admins can attach things. So it's a lot of things that you have to decide what you want to do. Um, but those are some of the options that you have in a group library. And we've hit our time. I'm happy to keep um, going, but um, I wanted to make sure that you know how to use this group libraries. Um, and if you have just a moment more, I'm going to share with you in, um, I had uh, some people who just joined us. I didn't, um, if you put your email in chat, I'll go ahead and I'll share one of the libraries that I created with you. Um, but uh, if, uh, you just give me one more moment. I'm going to show you uh, is, what that can library I just was ask, like. Yeah. Did you did you add names of people for each group there? Um, I mean, tell so, Lutero who the people are in the group. Yeah. So um, if I go ahead and I log in um, to the group that I created before. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. Uh, I'm going to pause the recording in just a moment. So I'm going to go into this Black History Month one that I created. You can see how, how this is a sample group that I created as a demonstration for a Zotero workshop. It's a public closed one and only members can view and see. Um, if you want to see what it looks like as a standalone thing, this is what it looks like. Um, and uh, if you are not a member, then you can't access um, or download some of the items, but you would be able to see them if I sent you the link. Um, but in terms of, let me go back. In terms of uh, managing the members, um, I'm gonna go in here to 
uh, the members. And this is where I'm gonna pause for just a moment. So you can see the names of the people that I invited. So you can add invitations down here. And right now I, I can see who has accepted it. So if you want to see this library and the inner workings of it, go ahead and send me your email and chat and I'll add it. But this is how you can identify um, who has uh, been invited and then um, who has accepted their invitation. And so you'll that, get- That could be a class, right? Mm -hmm. Or a subset of the class. Exactly. Okay. And students can do this on their own too. You get them set up with Sotero. Um, you teach them how, and I'm happy to do it, teach them how to create a group library. You have their teams work with it and they have you have them invite you in um, to uh, be one of the members so that you can see it. And so um, there are ways to update the roles since I don't have anybody in this one. I'm gonna go back to my member setting, go to my groups again and go into a different group that I've had. So Chris and I, did this group with on a biology paper. I'm gonna to go to manage the members. Um, there's him, there's me. It's identifying me as the owner, but if I want to make him an admin, I can. So he would be able to change settings, um, but he can't delete the account. That's the difference between an admin and a owner. Um, otherwise he has just got whatever things that I allowed for him to be able to do under the um, group settings. Here. Okay, I can't see any of that moving. Uh, any of your. Oh, I'm sorry. Moving. I'm sorry. I pulled up the. Let's see what are. Oh, I I paused the the screen sharing and um, not the recording. So um, let me unpause this. Thanks for letting me know. I've never. And paused. Okay, I'm just going to stop sharing and share again. Okay, so this is um, a group setting that um, my colleague and I did, and uh, in it, um, let me stop the recording or pause the recording.